All right, like, click, subscribe, do all that. You already know what time it is. It's Netflix time. This movie's called A Perfect Fit. Sparks fly with a fat fashion blogger and badly meets a gifted shoemaker, leading her to question her commitment to her fiance. So it's one of those Indonesian romantic comedy comedies just came out. It's about an hour 52 minutes long. Spoiler alert, let's just get it. So we got this guy named Rio, he's a shoemaker. And we got this lady named Sasuke, her boyfriend Denny, who's a bit of an ass clown. But his people's got dough and all that. And this is Sasuke's best friend, Armani. I guess you could say she kind of saves this movie, honestly. So these people believe in a lot of luck, you know, fortune tellers and all that. And they believe in a certain leaf that'll bring them to their soulmate and whatnot. You know, Rio makes shoe, shoes, soulmates. You can see where I'm kind of going with this, right? Anyway, next day they walking around. And fr my friend Armani keeps convincing her, like, you gotta find your, follow your heart. Follow the leaf of faith or some shit. Which ends up taking her to a shoe store. First off, the shoe store's not even really open like that. But if it's not open like that, why is the door even open? But Rio says he's supposed to be renovating and all that. Yeah, by the way, this is his store. So he picks out a quote-unquote perfect shoe for her, right? And without even measuring her foot, he just happens to get the perfect shoe size. This shit is giving me Cinderella vibes. Well, anyway, he boxes her shoes up and goes about her business. But when she gets in the cab, she realizes she has the wrong shoes. So he tells the cab driver he gotta turn around and go back. But she don't remember the address or nothing. So then she's like, hurry up, but then he's hurry up and speeds or whatever like that. But then I'm like, wait a minute. What the hell is he speeding to if he doesn't even know where the fuck he's supposed to be going? And two, how the hell did he mix up your shoes? You were the only one in the goddamn store. Well, supposedly while all this was going down, her boyfriend was having his 27th birthday. And he was having a celebration because his dad was buying him a hotel. He really needed her to be there to culminate it. So wait a minute, the reason she's late for something this important is because she wanted to go buy some fucking shoes. So she finally gets back to the store. She accidentally trips into a ladder, which at the top of it had a bucket of paint and fell down on her. Okay, Rio, yes, yeah, she might have been clumsy, but dude, why the fuck would you have paint sitting on top of a goddamn ladder? So she needs to get to a bathroom to clean up. He gets her to a bathroom, but forget there's no running water in there. I'm like, really, dude? Then he gets some water for a kettle, and I'm like, where'd he get that water from if he didn't get it from the bathroom? It's like, what the fuck? While he's changing the, she's changing the different clothes and getting shirts or whatever like that, she's actually still on the phone with Denny. He hears Rio's voice in the background. He's like, what the fuck is going on? He throws his phone across the room. His dad comes up there. He's like, hey, Denny, you need to be more mature. He's like, dad, you don't even know what the fuck going on right now. So everybody's all celebrating. Sasuke finally shows up. Yes, he's angry at her and he gets very belligerent. Then he accuses her of doing stuff. Then he gets mad and throws a shoe at the DJ for no reason. I'm like, what the fuck did she do? After all that, Sasuke leaves and comes back to the shoe store. And for whatever reason, she throws a shoe at the store but ends up hitting Rio when he pops up. Then she's riding along with him in a taxi taking him to the hospital. This taxi cab guy keeps talking about giving him CPR mouth to mouth. Like, look, he ain't down on my watch. Talk about fairy tales and all this other shit. And clearly she didn't know anything about CPR, so she basically ended up kissing him. Which somehow he was still conscious for. But she didn't see it and still trying to wake him up. They finally get him to an emergency room. And the first thing he says when he wakes up is like, hey, did you guys lock the door or lock the store up? Yeah, if that's the first thing in your mind, sure. Okay, whatever. Anyway, he gets all better. Goes to see Sasuke, who was apparently having a photo shoot. Then they get to talking and all that. He wants to set up a date with her tomorrow at like 10 o'clock. Before that, she's got to go to this cleanse. You know, like a Reiki cleanse or something. But apparently after she did that, she had to get some work done. Guess he'd been sitting there for a couple hours. And when he was about to leave, she finally showed up. He's like, well, since you was late, I kind of missed my other appointment. So I guess you owe me right now. She's like, all right, what I got to do? Says, meet me tomorrow at 10 o'clock by taking a proper date. I mean, he never even asked her about a schedule or nothing. And if she ain't meet you at this time at 10 o'clock, what makes you think she's going to be there tomorrow at 10 o'clock? Nevertheless, she gets down time to get their date. Now, her homegirl Armani sings the songs in these movies, and I ain't go front, it's pretty damn good. You know how a lot of these Bollywood films, the music be all over the damn place? Either that, they just don't match the scene or what's going on? Well, here's not the case. This shit has actually been done right. And in large parts, keep you interested in the movie. Well, it doesn't help it that much, but it doesn't hurt it either. Well, anyway, they're starting to get closer, and I'm thinking to myself, does she even give a fuck about Denny anymore? Because I don't think she does. Then they take a walk us on the beach. And in this movie, there are a lot of shoe analogies. And Rio makes a lot of them. And for somebody that works on shoes, his analogies make no fucking sense. And you know, he's supposed to be the guy we like in this movie because he's supposed to come off smooth and sophisticated. But no, his lines are fucking trash. See that face? That's the face of confusion. Like, what the fuck did he just say? Well, anyway, afterwards, they have a gathering, a celebration. And she gets Sasuke to celebrate with a shoe store. And I'm thinking to myself, how much time has passed? Because I remember at one point in time, he was still renovating. By the way, that's Rio's mom. Then out the blue, Denny and his walk bodyguards are walking through. He grabs up Sasuke, talking about he's gonna take her home. He's like, look man, don't hurt her, I asked her to come. Then they get to scrap it, they get to beef it. Then we find out about Sasuke's mom, and she's sick. And the only reason that Sasuke was really gonna marry Denny in the first place is because they wanted to, basically, for financial reasons. But she's really only thinking about her mom at this point. A lot of her illness comes from stress and all that. But even throughout all that, she's still trying to see what's up with Rio. But there's people on his side of the family that are also trying to get him engaged to this chick named Tierra. She owns like this shoe company, and apparently they've known each other for a long time since they were like kids. 
Yeah, that's Tierra. Yeah, she's kind of cute and all that, but she's extremely bossy. Like, that's this guy you gotta be when you're running a company. And of course, the parents try to get him together and shit. Regardless, they still meet up with each other even though they tell each other about their situations. And he still wants to keep spending time with her, so they're gonna use Armani as a chaperone. So it won't look like, they, won't look like they're spending time with each other together. But it still looks like they are anyway, so it doesn't even really matter. Then they get some alone time, he picks a ladybug off her neck. Then he tells her how many spots is on a ladybug is how many kids you're gonna have. So they count like five spots, it's like, really? So she slips up and is like, damn, I guess we're gonna have five kids, huh? Then they end up swapping spit. Then they end up going to Sasuke's mom's house. And I'm thinking to myself, they both were about to have fiancés. When did they have time to do all this? Then he helps her cook in the kitchen and all that. Next day we see Rio and Tierra and we see how she works in the sweatshop. She's like, the quarter hour was a mess down. We got five certain niggas. Then she ended up firing like half the people in the sweatshop. I'm like, God damn. Of course, you got angry mobs that are mad because they lose their jobs. She's like, look, man, we got to make examples somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Well, anyway, when they get home, she got a surprise for them. Everybody's there for some type of celebration. Yeah, when they got there, they basically forced an engagement on them. It's like, really? Now, she generally does care for them, but she's worried about a business too and she needs to somebody to help run it with but he don't say nothing he just rolled with the punches i mean what can you say with the whole family's forcing you to do this shit well at least it wasn't somebody new he's known it since childhood so there you go as they're getting this stuff together they meet up with somebody that's supposed to be his grandfather he's like i got him for our wedding night just to check to see if you're still a virgin so he still got his doubts about whether she even smashed rio or not i'm just like wow been insecure much huh the way they've been acting towards each other i can't blame him meanwhile back at rio's house while he's making his mom breakfast he finds out about their ceremony on tv now out there, for them to believe in soulmates, they have certain customs that they have to go through. Honestly, there are too many to explain. Back at home, Sasuke daydreaming about kissing Rio and all that. Rio doing the same damn thing. So she comes to a store again, and they're basically like, look, we can't be doing this. We're both engaged to uh, one another, other, to other people. He's like, nah, but we still gotta have what's best for us, right? Then she sees Tierra gets a change of heart. She's like, man, fuck that, I ain't buying no damn shoes. So she goes with Denny and she wants to buy some different shoes from somewhere else. Trying to find out when they go to this certain spot. Rio and Tierra just happen to be there at the same time, right? Sasuke knew Rio was gonna be there, but Denny is like, really? He's thinking to himself, Sasuke set this shit up. But apparently they're here just to see the festivities, right? Then they go to the mud wrestling competition. And I'm thinking to myself, why would you have these two going against each other? Like, really? So she had picked out a pair of shoes she liked. Then he was like, man, take them shits off right now. And he found out those are shoes that Rio made. So he's like, uh, yeah, no, you're not wearing these. So he calls her just to say they really shouldn't be seeing each other ever again. That's not really what they both want, but it's best for both parties. But while she was saying that, she had followed him to the certain spot. Now how she found time to do that and got away from Danny, I have no idea. He's good when he's delivering regular lines, but when it comes to metaphors, this just don't make no fucking sense. And that, my friends, is what turns a serious moment into a comedy hour. Later on, Sasuke and Denny go on a proper date. Talks about he'll change for her, he'll control his attitude, you know what I'm saying? Wants to be the only one in her life, blah, 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 all that shit. Later on that night, Amani was at a dinner and she heard these other chicks talking. I heard him mention Denny's name in the background. So she ended up following these chicks and they were both headed towards him while he has a towel on. And apparently they don't have no closed doors in his hotels because she was able to record whatever he was doing. So while Sasuke was in a meeting, Armani sent her the video on him kissing on both of these chicks. So yeah, he tried to make you feel bad, but he was out there doing his dirt. So they get in the car later, Tetra building up. So when she confronts him about it, he flat out tells her. He's like, look, I'll keep you happy, but the thing is, this is about financials. This is about your mom getting better, isn't it? Yeah, basically, he don't care about the marriage for love. He cares about it more so so he can get the deed and own all the property from his dad. So yeah, love ain't got nothing to do with it in this equation. Then she goes to another part of the beach and starts spazzing and yelling the fuck out. And at that same time, my mom had to get carried to the hospital. Meanwhile, they were preparing for the ceremony for Tierra and Rio. But because they had the wrong type of leaves for the ceremony, the ceremony got delayed. Like I said, it's a spiritual ancestral thing. This guy got fired for not getting the right leaves. But more importantly, Rio wasn't even at the ceremony. We're like, where the fuck is he at? He's back at his spot packing up all his shoes. And while he's talking to him about the person he really cared about, which is Sasuke, Tierra overhears the whole conversation. After she left out, he chased her down to the beach. She's like, why you didn't just say anything from the get-go? He's like, I ain't know what else to say. And he gave her back the ring. And then her and her brother dips off. Meanwhile, back at the hotel, Denny and his brother are arguing about something. He ends up slapping him and shit. I'm like, God damn. And then his dad's like, you know what? I'm sick of this shit. I'm giving a company to your brother. There's going to be no wedding, none of that. Because for one, I know what you use this hotel for. You use it for a whole bunch of other women. And two, the debts have been piling up and shit. So yeah, it's a wrap for you, son. Sasuke back with the family, taking care of mom. Armani gets a text message from Rio talking about he's flying out to Jockin. And who knows if he's ever going to come back. She shows Sasuke the message. She's like, shit, you better go get your mans. So basically, he's on his way up out. She gets herself a cab. She's got the same cab driver from the beginning of the movie. Apparently, he's got hair now. Traffic is crazy when she gets there. She doesn't see him. Sees the store closed. She spins a feather, see where it lands. Lands behind her. There's Rio. He's still here. Puts on the shoe that he made for her on some Cinderella shit. They go by the beach once again, and they live happily ever after. Wait, when he was supposed to go on a trip somewhere, was he just not going? Like, all right. Well, there was a whole lot more going on with that movie than just that, though, so let me tell you. A perfect fit on that place. Check it out. Like, subscribe, do all that. You already know what time it is. Look easy, all the easy, Mr. Oh, big. You got this slogan.